And I'm going to begin to start with a very general question. How to increase the impact of audiovisual intervention against gender violence? This is the main question related with this presentation. And I am answer to this question taking into account two, two things, two kinds of things. First time, first, first, uh, a theoretical approach called, that is called narrative persuasion and in second place I am going to give up you information to how to improve uh, narrative, uh, narrative messages to uh, persuade people, in this case uh, in the topic of gender violence. Well, we all know uh, we all we all we all know the power that narrative has has in has in our life. The recently, very recently, this kind of research has called has been defined and uh, it's called right now as narrative persuasion research. In this case, in this case, a narrative usually has a sequences a sequences of events, characters, and in most cases, uh, arguments, attitudes that can be explicit or implicit. So people exposed to a narrative can access to information and to change attitudes. In fact, the third core narrative persuasion is trying to understand which are the explanatory processes that can explain how a narrative persuades people. This is the main area of research nowadays. In this context, several research has been designed uh, in the context of health communication, trying to apply the research, the theoretical research in narrative persuasion to construct uh, narratives with power, with the power to persuade people. Uh, for example, in this case, this is a picture from Tamar Lesson. Uh, this is a soap opera developed in, in, in the States, trying to persuade women, Latin women, to, in relation to, in relation to uh, cervical cancer. But this is a pro that is usually called entertainment education. So, one important aspect uh, in this, uh, in this field, minority persuasion research, is how to explain, I said before, how to explain the power of narrative. In this case, several theoretical models have been developed. One of them is focused on the concept of identification with the characters. In this case, identification with the character is playing an important mediating role. Uh, identification with the character is an imaginative process that involves Empathy, cognitive empathy, emotional empathy, and merge. The sense to be the, the character in a moment in which you are exposed to a narrative. So the problem is how to increase identification with a character in the case that identification is a very relevant process. In this case, several lines of research have been developed, and one of them is related with the concept of similarity. Similarity is a property. Well, it's a property. It's a process that involves the character, but also the audience. It's a, a negotiation process in, in, in the sense that you perceive that the character is similar to you or not. In this case, similarity can be related or can be based on objective traits, for example, demographic aspect, or also can be based on uh, subjective characteristics, uh, for example, personality, beliefs, or attitudes. Well, there is uh, uh, enough uh, research of, in, in this field, narrative and similarity and identification, but not, uh, not enough to understand the complete process. In this case, in our research, we are basing, we are basing our study in the impact of one 
dimension of similarity, in this case, nationality with the protagonist of the narratives. Yes, this, and this is very important in the context of gender bias for two reasons. First of all, because most of content analysis studies developed in Spain, for example, have discovered that uh, in the case of uh, news cover of gender violence, there, are, there is a, space, a, a stereotype that links immigrant people with gender violence. On the other hand, in this case, based on uh, survey studies, most people think in Spain that gender violence is a problem more related to immigrant population than other kinds of population. For this reason, we are assuming, we were assuming when we plan, uh, we, we designed the, the research, the, the following question. What is the, what is, what is the effect of changing the nationality of the protagonist in a narrative whose focus is to persuade people against gender violence. A narrative can be uh, uh, the, the main character in a narrative against gender violence can be an immigrant or can be a, a, a non-immigrant, for example, a native. In this case, this modifies, this impacts the level of identification with the characters and in an indirect way the attitudinal impact. In this case, for, for, uh, in this case, for uh, uh, na the nationality with the protagonist will be our main independent variable. More theory. Uh, of course, this is related with the level, with the level of prejudice that people have uh, in relation to immigrant population. In this case, we, take, we are taking a framework, the research from model racism. In this case, model racism is a subtle form of prejudice that is usually associated with negative reaction towards immigrants. Well, uh, there is a very small, very few studies uh, re uh, that related uh, modern things and identification and impact of narrative. But in one of them, we found, for example, working with movies protagonized by, by immigrants, by Poniente, that people who have a higher level, level of modern racism uh, have less identification with immigrants in, the, in this narrative. So we think that modern racism can interfere the reception process also in the case of campaigns, of media campaigns against gender violence. So this is our hypothesis, our proposed, and we are proposing a moderated mediation model. As you can see, here is our independent variables, similarity in terms of nationality. We have one major uh, major uh, in the, uh, mediator variable, uh, identification with the protagonist. We have one moderator variable, model racist. And finally, we have our uh, dependent variable, risk perception. Here's a picture from the audiovisual media we use. It's Maria, and Maria was presented as a Spanish woman or as an Argentinian immigrant uh, woman living in Madrid. From this theoretical model, we have, uh, we have four different hypotheses. Well, uh, in the study, this is an experimental study, participants were 75 women, Spanish university students, of course, all were Spanish, and in this case we have a two group uh, designs in which the independent variable was similarity in terms of nationality. In this case, we have a condition, a first condition, with low uh, similarity, in which Maria is presented as an Argentinian immigrant, and we have another condition in which Maria was presented as an Spanish. This is the high similarity condition. Well, we have a video narrative that it was a real audiovisual material that we found on YouTube, and this 
about a campaign developed in Argentina. I'm talking to, I will talk this after with more, with more detail. Uh, we use a questionnaire with two kinds of measures. Some of the measures were taken before watching the, the video, this is the protest, in which we, we measure modern regimes, age and nationality, and after watching the, the video, uh, people, participants, respond to the rest of the questionnaire to measure emotions, emotions, uh, identification with the main protagonist, enjoyment, and our uh, dependent variety. Well, our stimul experimental stimuli was a, was a video against gender violence. The video was uh, used was by based on a media campaign against uh, gender violence that was produced by the uh, government of Argentina. And in this case, we did the following. The, of course, this is a, a video with a narrative format, with a very dramatic tone to elicit a, a, a high emotional impact in people. And with the duration, the, it lasts two minutes and five seconds. And we have an addition in the video to take out dialogues and add dramatic, a dramatic music and subtitles. Well, before watching the video, in the first text on the screen, participant could see one of the two information. In one case, as you can see, Maria was presented as an Spanish woman living in Madrid, and she's, uh, she's a victim of gender violence. And in another condition, in another video, the, same, the, the video was the same, and uh, the only difference was that Maria was presented as an Argentinian immigrant. Well, both uh, videos, both experimental st stimuli, were uh, evaluated. In the, same, in the same way, uh, enjoyment was, was uh, middle. In a scale from 1 to 10, uh, the mean was 6, but not a statistical difference between both conditions. Well, this is our instrument and variables. We have a scale to measure modern racines. You have here an example. We have another scale to measure emotions, feels while watching the app. Identification with the protagonist is a scale developed by myself and a colleague some time ago. And finally, as measured as, uh, with respect to uh, risk perception. Uh, this is our main uh, dependent variable. So you can see red light, this is uh, the measure with high red light reliability. <laughs> and here are the results. First, the first hypothesis proposed that similarity has a positive influence on identification with the protagonist. As you can see in this uh, figure and in this uh, statistical test, in fact, our, our hypothesis can be, had to be rejected because we, we, uh, we didn't find the statistical differences in the level of identification between both conditions. In both cases, are very, very similar. However, in, the, in another kind of variables, in this case negative emotions, you can see that we, find, we found statistical differences. In this case, a, a participant felt more negative emotion after watching the video in which Maria was presented as an immigrant than when Maria was presented as an immigrant. Okay, this is a very important result. Second uh, hypothesis, hypothesis proposed that similarity uh, has a positive influence in our main dependent variable, risk perception. In this case, with uh, using a multiple, multiple linear regression, we found that, in fact, similarity had no, had no any effect on Per, uh, risk perception. In this case, for, in this case, our hypothesis can, uh, have to be rejected. Have to reject. Yes, third hypothesis. In this case, we are trying to uh, understand whether modern racines 
is a moderator vari variable in the relationship between similarity and identification with the protagonist. That is, that, uh, that is, that means, uh, that is related with the fact that perhaps people with different profiles in modern things can react in a different way depending on which kind of character is the main protagonist in the novel. Well, again, we have to reject this hypothesis because the uh, interaction effect between similarity and modern races wasn't significant. Wasn't significant. But we can see here that modern races have a significant negative effect on identification with the protagonist. So people with higher moderations even uh, have less identification with Maria in this case. Uh, as I said before, similarity has an effect of ne on negative emotion. For this reason, we try to another model, another moderation model, in which we include mo moderations as a moderator to try to contrast if this uh, variable in fact was a moderator variable in the relationship between similarity and negative emotion. And in this case we found a significant interaction effect between similarity and moderations and in this figure you can see the different relationship between similarity and negative emotions depending on the level of moderations. In this case, for example, this is a very important result, in my view. In this, this line reflects the, the fact that people with very low moderate profile uh, didn't differ in, in, the, in the level of a negative emotion depending on uh, of the condition. So they felt the same level of negative emotion which Maria uh, uh, Maria, uh, Maria uh, as a Spanish woman or Maria as an immigrant. In both cases, felt the same kind of emotion, the same intensity. But if you, you see this line, in this case, uh, this line reflects people with high uh, moderate zinc. In this case, we found a very strong positive relationship. This, that means that people who feel who felt more negative emotion were those uh, who were exposed to the condition in which the character was an Argentinian immigrant. In this case, it's a very very clear result. Finally, uh, the last uh, hypothesis uh, proposed a moderate mediation model in which in which we we hypothesize that similarity could be have an indirect effect on risk perception through identification with Maria, but only in case when moderation was high. Again, the model uh, we, we we don't have a positive result with the model, but in this case we found that in fact identification were were positive associated with risk perception, and this is an important result. Finally, and taking into account this last result, we propose another model, in this case a serial multiple mediator model, again with process macro for SPS, S, model 6, in which we try to understand the relationship between negative emotion, identification with the protagonist, and the impact of both mediator variables on risk perception. And in this case, you, can, you, you need to follow the red line. This is the significant part. We found that a high similarity protagonist induced more negative emotion. In turn, this negative emotion were associated with more identification with the protagonist and, and more identification with protagonist was, was associated with more risk perception. And this is, I, I think, an important result. Well, conclusion and practical implication. Uh, with this research, we have discovered that similarity, emotion, and identification 
are very important processes to try to understand the impact of narratives. But in this case, and this is a very a, a different with respect, with respect to previous study, we found another route to persuasion result. In previous result, the path was from identification to negative emotion to attitudes. But in this case, if you remember, we found, we found a different path from emotion to identification to attitudes. Perhaps this can be explained because we are, we are, we were working with narratives with a very dramatic tone. And in previous experimental studies, people, result for, for example from Netherlands, have been, have been working with a narrative with less dramatic tone. Finally, uh, this has this uh, an application in the develop, development of a campaigns against gender violence. Perhaps if we develop campaigns, media message, media narrative message that focus on protagonists who pertain, who are from other groups like immigrants, the efficacy of this kind of intermedia intervention can be reduced. So, especially in people with manifest high prejudice. For this reason, we recommend not using this kind of information, reference to the nationality, to the protagonist, to the victim of gender violence, to uh, do this kind of narrative issues. But future research, of course, there is a lot of factors, a lot of uh, attributes that can contribute to the process of identification with the protagonist. And we are now researching in all of these factors. And that's all.